All right, we are live. Welcome to the Team Carter Family Adventure Podcast. Yep, Jen just posted something on Facebook right now. We're your hosts. I'm Jen. And I'm David. Welcome. You're you. You're We're you. glad that you're here. Happy 4th of July to all of our American family and friends. Um, hope you had a restful, long weekend celebrating our freedoms. We had a lot of fun here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We went to a citywide event yesterday called Red, White, and Boom. Boom. Where the city shoots off fireworks. It was a lot of fun. Um, three out of three of our children would highly recommend. And let's see, what else did we do? We um, ate hot dogs, got ice cream, and put blueberries and strawberries in it. Yes. To celebrate. Easy dessert. And... Yeah, today was just a really restful day. I feel like we've been doing 4th of July stuff for three days, so it's been really good. Um, Today was just a more relaxed day at home, which was really needed. We cleaned house, and we actually foraged some blackberries. We are that cool. In a local park. Uh, Didn't know that was going to happen today, but we found quite a lot, actually. And um, went home, washed them really good, and made a blackberry cobbler freedom thankful for the freedom to just forage blackberries and throw them in a cobbler a couple things that we um talk about today um that well we were going back and forth about um it was we signed up our kids for homeschool next year oh yeah we did that today thankful for we exercise our rights as free <laughs> as people, free people who in have America. the right to choose how to educate our children, and we signed up to homeschool them again next year. Yes, we. For those of you who don't know, we have homeschooled for several years. Let me think. This will be our. Is this is our fourth year. I think this is our fourth year of homeschooling. Um, yeah, so we're thankful for South Carolina homeschool laws and being able to do that. Being able to choose how you educate your child. That's what I'm thankful for. So even if you don't homeschool, um, just be appreciative that you have the right to... Do so if you wanted to. Do so if you want to. (laughs) Or you have the right to put your kid in public school or private school or school of choice or... Charter schools. What have you. Unschool. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever's right for your family. So, um, yeah, thankful for that. And today, David had so much creative free time that he created a... Desk! Desk! Tell him how you did it. All right, so... Our house is small, if you didn't know that. While we don't live in a tiny home, it is... It is pretty, pretty, pretty close to a tiny home. What's the square footage on that? Just to give people, like... 1,064. There you go. Just up under 1,100 square feet. Not 1,600. 1,064. 1,064. Um, so, what that means is we have, there is a, uh, what's the phrase? Space comes at a premium. We think extremely creatively on how to use our space. Yes. Which we, we there's a whole there's a whole podcast that can be done on the whole choice that we made. Maybe we'll get into some of that. But so t- today, well, for the last three years we lived in this house, we have needed some sort of a work work desk workstation. We had one in our old closet that was used to be an old laundry room that we have since transformed into a bathroom. So we gained the bathroom, which is a huge plus, but we lost the workspace, which is a overall small negative, but but still a negative. Mm-hmm. So, and we did that, was that a year ago now? If you can imagine when COVID first started in 2020, um, David was sitting with all of our clothes hanging about six inches from his head. And he was sitting at a giant, it was really too big for the space, but it's what we had on hand, was like a giant captain's chair, like a swivel office chair. It was, it was huge. And he had enough room with the desk that we were currently using. I don't even know if it was an actual desk. I think it was like more like a hall table that I bought off Facebook like a Marketplace, like a buff, almost like a buffet table. But I don't know. It was 
I don't really think it was an actual desk. It was more of like a table with three drawers. But anyway, we stuck it in the closet, and that was David's quote-unquote work-from-home office space that really wasn't functional at all. So he could sit there and take phone calls hunched over a desk in a closet with clothes hanging in his face. And that lasted all of like a couple days. Yeah. So <laughs> He had to come up with other options. So we've needed a workspace. And, you know, it's one of those things just kind of in the back of your mind. You got other things going on. I got this. I got that. And I, I started watching some YouTube videos about some... We've been thinking about buying one of those Ikea folding, floating desks. And I um, just didn't really see anything that I like. The stuff from Ikea that was the floating desk is like, well, we're not going to... We're never going to fold it up because we're always... Because there's going to be a printer sitting there. There's going to be a computer sitting there so we're never going to fold it up so I don't really see the point of the folding stuff mm-hmm. by the way if you if you hear what sounds like uh, fireworks there are actual fireworks uh, mortar happening. shells in the distance we're not you know we're not back in Nam in the fall of Saigon or anything but it is indeed July 4th so if you hear that that's what's going on um, and uh, I gotta move because I'm uh, I'm plugging the computer oh lord hang on hang on technical difficulties there we go now we're charging alright um so, watching some YouTube videos, and um, I saw one in particular that was, you know, like a DIY, and a guy bought a uh, a butcher block, count like a kitchen countertop, from um, from a DIY store. I don't remember which one, Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, whatever. And I was like, man, that that butcher block is beautiful. And he bought some one inch um, steel galvanized pipe and mounted that to the wall with some flanges so, so there's three basically protrusions coming out of the wall to serve it as the base so that gives it that floating look so I said well I could do that so I went home I took the kids to Home Depot and found all the stuff and came home and and, and lo and behold we have a desk now it you know it's, it's one of those things I've been waiting a year and a half to do but I just got the right inspiration, I guess, and within three hours, three and a half hours, you know, done. All right, moving on. Um, I thought about trimming, because it, it's kind of amazing that Home Depot had the exact right size butcher block that we need. Like, I didn't, I didn't have to cut it. I had expected to need to cut it, and we may still end up doing that at some point, but we have, but, but we have that option. Um, what size is it? But 25 by 50, I think. 25, maybe 28 by 50. Inches or centimeters? Inches. inches. Okay. 28 by 50, 25 by 50 butcher block countertop from Home Depot. They have them sitting in the back behind the refrigerators. Uh, they had they had a 4-foot section, they had a you know 8-foot section, and, and they had this 50-inch section. So, so that was cool. Um, and you oiled it, Miriam oiled it for you. Mm-hmm. With some mineral spirits. Mineral oil. Yeah. Uh, and it gave it a really nice, warm, Sheen. warm wood color. It, it, it's birch. So um, it's just a beautiful piece of wood. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've been, put, been, been needing something for a long time in the space, and all of a sudden I just got the right motivation, and then wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know jam it out to Uncle Sam, so to speak, and you know, we have a desk now. That's so America. Take your children to a home improvement store to build something for your house. Mm-hmm. I mean, gosh, that just screams like America to me. I don't know. Thankful for that. Thankful for home ownership that we can do that. And um, just to give you a visualization of, so we have this floating looking butcher block desk we took a chair from the laundry room that we were already using, so we didn't have to buy another chair. So we shoved that under there. We have the printer. The wireless router for the internet was already over there anyway. And um, we had some weird configuration before where we had shoved it kind of up around and under, kind of blocked it behind a nightstand. Well, now it is like pinned to the wall where it should be, so that's not taking up space. There's not like that funky cable sticking up. It's under rat's nest of cables. It's a, it's a good size. It's yeah. good. Yeah, it's really good. And then we also have a floating shelf above the desk 
kind of in the corner because this desk is in the corner now um, with David put our mic set up over there and his radio that he got and you're gonna have to talk about your radio in a second and he also hung up all of the uh, the guitars and the banjo above the desk so it looks really good I am I am very pleased he's pleased as well I mean he's probably gonna use it more than me but as a home office so to speak but it looks really nice and it really yeah. didn't take up that much space at all it's in the corner and it takes up maybe what two feet out from the wall yeah 20 20 25 inches out you know and there's still p- space with our uh, queen size bed that i don't feel like this desk is six inches from my face like yeah it's a good amount of space there's so. a healthy amount of space there yeah it's nice thank you david so, what i've learned is you're welcome by the way um what i've learned and this is just a little diy tip for you is do less just go figure out a way to do it in steps or do less than you think you want to do at one time here's why because your vision a lot of time in for the finished product ends up changing so if you can if you can stomach leaving things slightly unfinished for a period of time it will most of the time serve you well because a new solution will present itself in time uh, that's the that's the so I'm I'm really taking that method with our with our guest bathroom because it has been in progress for a solid year now, um, with no real end in sight. Uh, that's probably gonna end up having to pay somebody. I tried to take on myself um, putting up crown molding, and if listen, if you never cut crown molding before, it is it is it is quite complex. There there are some jigs you can get that make it a lot easier, but um, it is quite complex. Um, More difficult than what the uh, beginner realized more difficult than what this beginner realized who knew i didn't know that so so i got a uh, i'll talk about radio for a minute i i, I got a so one of my hobbies is, is ham radio and what is ham short for for those of us who were like me who had no that's clue a good question nobody about. really knows honestly nobody really knows a lot of people say I'm it's short up. I'm going to look it up right now. It's short for amateur radio, or AM for short, or HAM. Um, yeah, look it up. I'd be curious to see what it is. Amateur radio. It means amateur radio. Amateur radio, also known as HAM radio, is the use of radio frequency spectrum for purposes of non-commercial exchange of messages, wireless experimentation, self-training, private recreation, radio sport, Contesting and emergency communications. There you go. But why is it called that? Ham short for amateur. Okay. It's a radio thing. You it's wouldn't a, get it. It's a radio thing. Apparently, I don't understand at all. Uh, I, I just think it's really cool to, to have a totally independent form of communication over long distances. Now, how long distance can it get? This is the question. So... Under the right conditions, um, from unit to unit, I could talk probably 20 miles with my new radio. However... <clears throat> okay. Oh, oh, go ahead. Keep continue. I have a little factoid about ham radio. All right. How, however, they have these things called repeater stations. And so what, what repeater stations are, it's like, a, uh, it's like everyone can tune in to... Yeah, the one here is 147.30. So you you can tune to 147.30. Everybody can tune to 147.30. And everybody can hear what's being said on 147.30. Everyone can broadcast in to 147.30 and then 147.30. Or sorry, not everyone. Anyone can broadcast into the repeater station 147.30 and then that their transmission will be rebroadcast back out. Now the trick with this repeater station is it has it, it's a much stronger signal than most most amateur radios. So <clears throat> we get people from, you know, like I listen to the Nightly Nets, we get people from Myrtle Beach, from you know, Hickory, um, from Columbia that listen in and broadcast back and forth to, to that repeater station. Um, so that's really cool. But yeah, what are your factoid? And you have to have a license to operate a ham radio, so. 
you have to have a, you're supposed to have a license with the FCC. So not just anybody like I can't pick up a radio. I'm not. It's not proper etiquette for me to pick up a radio and just start yakking because yep. there's proper etiquette in how you call in and how you wait your turn and the lingo and things you say, things you don't say. I don't broadcast. I I I do not broadcast because I do not have my license. I have to say that. I don't broadcast because I don't have a license. And you shouldn't broadcast either if you don't have your license. Mm -hmm. But you can listen in at your heart's content. So with the Nightly Net, we turn it on and we like to listen where people are calling from. But we are not allowed to actually dial in until we get our license. Yeah. Um, So this little factoid um, says, this is coming from the American Legion actually, that amateur radio operators are also known as hams. Radio amateurs are known as hams. The term ham in quotes was a nickname for amateur radio operators was first heard in 1909 by operators in commercial and professional radio communities the word was subsequently embraced by the operators and stuck however the term did not gain widespread usage in the united states until around 1920 after which it slowly spread to other english-speaking countries that's what i have that's what i got Well, that's cool. So the American Legion supports... Uh, yeah, that's what it says. Amateur radio stuff. Mm-hmm. To become, to become a ham, this is further on down their website, to become a ham, one must pass the required examination on electronic theory, operating practices, and governing regulations. I have actually been studying to take the ham radio test, and it's, it's pretty intense. Uh, electromagnetic spectrum theory... Uh, circuitry, uh, radio diagram, you know, circuitry diagrams, radio theory. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty intense. It's not crazy, but it says public service is an underlying reason that the amateur radio service exists. During conflicts such as World War II, hams provided the military with pre-trained pool of experienced communicators and technicians. But during peacetime. Hams have communicated all over the world, all over the world, spreading goodwill and making friends in other parts of the globe. That's cool. And you can call into the. Can you call into the ISS or is that something? That you can do online. You can. So you can. I don't know. That, I don't know that I would call in, but you can listen to the ISS broadcast um, because there's always at least one licensed ham operator on the ISS and with it being 150 miles away or so the International Space Station ISS being the International Space Station of course with it being about 150 miles away um, you know above us as it comes over you as it's you know you, you have a 9 to 10 minute window as it passes above you to have to communicate back and forth hmm. so that's cool yeah Ham radio, so you should, if you're interested in ham radio, there are instructions online, and you can also punch in your zip code and find a ham radio club or something near you. Yeah, the York County Amateur Radio Society is, is actually pretty pretty incredible with the amount of stuff they do. Mm-hmm. So if you're in the York County area, I would strongly recommend you take advantage. And you're like, cool. what? And you're like, what do people talk about on ham radio on the nightly net? Should you ask? It's almost like a podcast because they do like a roll call of people call in and confirm that they're out there. Um, that they're, they they call in and then they go down the the line and then people just start talking about what they did that day, or you know what's going on in their family or I don't know it's just cool it's like listening to what would you compare it to I wouldn't say it's like a zoom call but it's like listening into like a podcast or something did you grow up maybe it's just the way I grew up was uh, maybe because my you know my dad was a pastor we were in churches so I was regularly around older people listening to them talk about things and it was always like, you know, nothing super significant in and of itself. It'd be like, you know, them talking about cutting the grass or going to the store. Or, that's what it reminds me of. It's just, just like hanging out, listening to some people chat it up, some old heads. We went and visited Meemaw today. Yeah, they talk about the different activities that your county amateur radio society is doing. I actually have never been to one because I don't have my license. So I couldn't broadcast. So I was like, what's the point of that? But 
I don't know how involved I get in it, but having the radio is very, very cool. Having the ability to broadcast like that is very, very cool. And we have taught our kids to use, like, the little handheld radios, like walkie-talkies that you get from, you know, like a craftsman walkie-talkie that you get. Like, that's a good skill for them to know how to use a walkie-talkie so that later on you can use a radio. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, learning Morse code, things like that. That's really important. One of our kids is interested in being a pilot or working for NASA, and so... I don't know. We're just like, these are all useful skills that would all add up to you wanting to fly. So Yeah, and speaking of uh, aerospace-related skills, we also launched our largest rocket ever. Yes. This past weekend. What was it called? Um, it was called... The technical term for this, it was an Estes rocket that we bought off what Amazon or something. Amazon off of Estes.com. Off of Estes.com. Excuse me. Maybe you can buy them on Amazon. I don't know, but Estes.com. It was the Mean Machine, which was the what six foot rocket six that they had. Six and a half foot. Six and a half foot tall rocket. Yes, we nicknamed her the Big Pink because she was going to the moon with class, and it was spray painted pink by our children. Um, half was the front half was pink, the back half was white. Right. So that was a lot of fun. That was so much fun. We launched it twice. Mm-hmm. Um, we had three engines, but we ran out of primers. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to the primer, but we launched it twice. It went about uh, 500 feet in the air. It actually we we're surprised because it didn't go as high as the other Estes rocket that we bought. That was the smaller one. We, we had two small ones that we launched, and those small ones went so dang high in the air that you. You couldn't see them anymore. It's, that's how right. high air they went. However, this one did have the built-in parachute, and twice the parachute mm-hmm. did deploy. And mm-hmm. so we got it back both times. That was really cool. Um, so, but we, we, <laughs> that was so cool. It was very cool. We might go with the smaller rockets again next time just to see how high we can get them. Um, and then maybe a little, just kind of a GoPro to get some footage. I don't know. I don't know. Could you put a shoot? A parachute in the smaller rockets? The, the smaller rockets have parachutes. They just didn't deploy. Well, if they did, we lost the first two we shot because they went so high. Oh, we right. We never, yeah. I mean, we never. Who knows? Maybe they're in, in with the woods, you know? Who knows? If you find a rocket, it's ours. Please give it back. We should write our name on it a little bit. We should write our name. If found, please return to, yeah. Um, so a kid's got a big kick out of that, obviously. I got a big kick out of that. <laughs> yeah, so I said we've been doing like three days of 4th of July. That was one of the nights was shooting off rockets. Mm-hmm. And then fireworks with the city, you know, were, were um, last night. And then so tonight we're just like, okay, we've done all the things. Yeah, today we just kind of laid low. We watched the Star Wars trilogy. Mm-hmm. We watched... We, we America. We, we watched the very first one two days ago, one day ago, yesterday. I'm telling you, all the days are running together. I don't remember. We watched the first. We watched A New Hope, episode four, um, yesterday. Then we started the Then we started episode five, Empire, and got about three quarters of the way through it. We finished it today and watched about half of The Return of the Jedi. Um, and then we had to turn it off because they can only stay on so much. And so we might finish that tomorrow night. I don't know. Just depending on what's going on. So one of our podcast episodes, you should look it up. It's when we talk about Star Trek versus Star Wars and why we like them so much. You can go back and take a listen to that if you'd like. Is that the one where we're going to be the kids? Yeah, that's yeah, the one where we're going to be the kids. Person and what they want to be. And that's a really good one. Might it's a good on one. Again. Might, might, we should bring them on again later to have the same have a similar conversation Mm -hmm. also speaking of interviews um, we're going to probably towards the end of this month um, we're we're lining up the guests for you guys we have uh, my dad is going to be on here at some point Uh, he is he's a he's more fun than a barrel of monkeys Um, we should interview them after they take their European vacation oh we should that'd be wonderful they're going to Amsterdam and a couple other places. Um, they've been on a European cruise before mm-hmm. um, where they visited, I think, Italy and Turkey and maybe some other places. Um, is like a Mediterranean cruise. And so this time they're going... Are they doing a cruise or are they just flying? I don't really know. 
Have they're going back to visit some of the countries that they missed. Mm-hmm. So. And so that'll be good. If you live in Europe and you see David and Kathy, tell them hello for tell us. Them, tell them we said hey. <laughs> um, and then we're also going to get some missionary friends of ours, Jeff and Alma Whitfield. We're going to have them on uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Just and not not in like an interview format necessarily just kind of a conversation about what it is they're doing mm-hmm. and uh, what their vision is for for they are are, are going to be missionaries to Greece uh, counselors they're both they're both certified licensed whatever counselors mm-hmm. professional counselors so so they're going to go do specifically dealing with ministry. trauma yeah because there are a bunch of refugees in Greece and so that's just something they've been to Greece before both of them and so they said that um, counseling and dealing with I don't know trauma and maybe even like marriage and family therapy is something that's greatly needed um, yeah yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk talk with them through through that and that's kind of the slate for the for the next little bit coming up I'm really excited about it mm-hmm. um we also hope to do some of these, just me and David, um, out west and some of the states that we're visiting. In six days, y'all, we are going on an epic road trip. It gives me a little bit of anxiety to think about it. Six days. <laughs> and I'll say why, because I'm going to, that's the longest I will have ever taken off of work. And uh, it's just going to be interesting. <laughs> it's just going to be interesting. But you know, I have every, to get real everybody else this week. in the world gets to take a sabbatical or a long vacation, so you do too. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And I'm going to have to get real disciplined this week to yeah. to get to get things like solidly wrapped up as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um. So, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I made the decision. You know, when we decided to take this trip three or four months ago that. Not 100 percent sure how I'm gonna take off three weeks, but I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna do it. And um, I've done some planning, and some things are pretty much in line. There's only like one, one really stress-inducing thing that I'm thinking of right now that I'm, it's, it's, it's a deal I'm working on that I gotta get figured out. But it won't matter. The kids will remember the trip. I will remember the trips. You know, 20 years from now, I will remember this trip, and I will not remember this one particular deal that I'm stressing about right now. I can promise on you that. On the measuring stick of life, how important is what you're doing? right now yeah. that, that that one deal that it's just, is it, just won't, it just won't even really matter right it, it won't really matter Eleanor dropped one of our children our beautiful wonderful amazing children dropped a bottle of soap on my toe today and drew blood and I don't know how this soap bottle drew blood it only fell from maybe two and a half feet up in the air but it did I'm sorry your toe looks like a little puffy just sorry a little about bit. that um, alright so I want to talk about having chores for kids. We, Jen, when you were growing up, did you regularly, were you made to clean? Was it expectation? You're going to clean your room, you're going to wash dishes, you're going to do the bathroom, anything like that? Not really. Not with regularity. Although I will say that my favorite chore... To this day, is folding clothes. Yeah. Because I would be put on, go fold some clothes. Like they would already be washed and dried, and they would be sitting in a pile on the couch, and I would volunteer. So we'd have to volunteer to do other things. I volunteer to fold clothes. And to this that's day, that's a good. That's a good chore. And to this day, I really <laughs> like doing laundry, washing, drying, folding clothes. Love it. I'll do that over washing dishes anytime. Mmm. It's like cutting grass or vacuuming. I like those too. Mm. Um, but yeah. So. So we, no, we I did not have we did not have a rotating chore chart or anything like that. Like I one know. like one yeah. week you're on the bathrooms yeah. and the next week you're on kitchen. Like we just didn't do that. Um, now if we were punished, you would scrub some toilets or something like that but that was a punishment that was not like a you're on bathroom duty this week or anything and so we're trying to figure out you know our kids they're eight six four mm-hmm. eight-year-old can definitely help out 
Definitely. Six-year-old can help out some. Mm-hmm. Four-year-old buddy just... We're still working on sweeping. Buddy, just, <laughs> just go watch TV. But, you know, but, we're, just, but he, he can pick up his toys. He can pick up his toys. He can pick up his clothes. Right. And he can take... He likes to take out the trash, but he needs help. Mm-hmm. But he likes to take out the trash. He's the best boy. And he can... Um, like you know put up his shoes in his organizer you know yeah. it's more like organizational things versus yeah. actual cleaning things and so today so we we've had our girls in particular they like to do things together so we've had them wash dry and put up dishes on a regular basis mm-hmm. and then they're t- getting better at it they get pretty good at it and there's less there's like two feet less of water all over the counter <laughs> the first couple times it was like a water fight it happened in there it was like did and, you just uh, take a whole bucket of water and just Chuck it all around the kitchen because why is everything wet? Why is everything we don't have a dog, but why is everything shaggy and wet? I'm so confused. Big shaggy dog. So and I think that's the thing is that they're they're gonna be bad at it, right? They're just gonna be bad at first. The only way that that they get better at it is is just by doing it. And now, I mean, they still get water in places, but now they know how to do it. So on the flip side, David, when you were a kid, say around, let's say, six to ten years old, did you have regular chores? I I had to clean my room. Mm-hmm. My sisters would probably say I did not. My sisters would probably say, you never made David do anything. I think I had to clean my room, but it was not with regularity. It was like, I did have to make my bed. Like, every day I made my bed. But I don't think I actually went through and deep cleaned my room, but like once a month or something. It was when my mom came in there and told me to do it. That's it? Yeah, that's it. It's so messy. Like, you know, and then I'd have to like actually clean it. But with like daily cleaning, I don't think I did that. I didn't do daily cleaning by stretch of imagination. I I think it's like once a week, mom would come and be like, all right, that's it. Clean your room. Um, I remember, I remember sweeping mopping i was made to cut the grass at an early age i cut a lot of grass when i was growing up like how like how old was your dad like here you go 10 11 really that's really good yeah i I cut a lot of grass i never cut grass until i was like that was my thing married to you (laughs) i don't think i ever (laughs) cut grass until i was married um it's a good skill to know how to do, though. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. thankful that I know how to do that now. Uh, so, like, it, it it wasn't punishment. I could tell you that. Clean, clean was not punishment. Which I don't just feel like you're part of the family. You need to learn to clean up after yourself. It's not punishment to have to necessarily clean a toilet. It's just part of being a human being. Learn how to clean up after yourself. You use the shower and I clean it. I feel, I feel like because there's more people in your house, too. Like, yeah, things get dirtier faster, especially yeah. in a small house. So, yeah. And the beautiful thing about our small house, going back to the small house thing, I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, the, the, the beautiful thing about the small house is, does it get messy fast? Yes. Yep. Do you have to keep a track on how much physical how much stuff you have? Absolutely. But it does not take very long to clean. Like, all five of us can get in here and clean in probably an hour and a half max, and the whole house be spotless. I mean, honestly. That's right. doing every room, doing everything. That, that's everything in every room. Hour and a half, you know, max. Um, super deep clean, you know, two hours, right? You know, le- less than half a day, be, be totally done. And uh, it's just not the case with every single house. So that's a really nice aspect of it as well. I think it's also good to, like, work as a team as opposed to one person, let's just say me, putting out, as you said earlier, little fires here and there and there. Like, um, for example, like, one day I was really stressed out because I felt like I cleaned the kitchen, like, six times. Any moms feel me? Like, I cleaned the kitchen six times, but you couldn't tell if you walked in because it just looked like a bomb went off, Um, even though... I felt like I had washed dishes three times, and I swept and mopped, and then it got dirty again, and it was like, it was just like a mess. Or I tackled the kitchen and the living room, and those were really clean, but then the kids' room was a mess, or I never got to the guest bathroom because 
I was cleaning the kitchen three times. Like, well, it was just yeah. so much for one person. Well, but then when we all do it, we knocked it out. No problem. Or if it's just you doing it, you clean the kitchen, you go to clean the living room, and, and in the process of while you're cleaning the living room, the kids destroy the kitchen so that when you Again. finish cleaning the living room, the kitchen's messy. So you say, okay, let me finish... Let me take up some of this kitchen stuff. You clean up the kitchen in the process. You clean the kitchen again. The kids are are currently destroying the living room because you kicked them out of the kitchen because you were cleaning it. Right? So that's the thing. That's why you got to do it. And some would say go outside, but we have clay outside. And after it's been raining, we have a clay soil. Then there's red clay tracked all in your house. And outside is a a viable option. (laughs) It is. A lot of times. um, Except when it's extremely hot or extremely cold. Except it's also 100 degrees. Uh, but one thing that we did today that was really pretty pretty game changing was went through all the kids' clothes. We have people that love us everywhere and love our kids, and they're so generous. We love we um, love our friends and family. They're so generous to us. But one of the one one of the one of the results of that is that our kids have an abundance of stuff. I'm talking about clothes in particular. Clothes, particularly clothes, and uh, like you know. Four year old had so many clothes he couldn't even clo- he could not even fit them in his drawers, and he could never find anything. So every time he would he would go to find something, he would pull every single item of clothing out of the drawers, and make a gigantic mess like like a volcanic eruption of, of clothing. And uh, he got frustrated. We got frustrated with him. So we said, "That's it. Pick pick you know five to seven t-shirts, three or four pairs of pants, and here's as much underwear as you can find." Right. These are your clothes. And he's just happy as a clam. And we did the same thing with the girls. Um, and got rid of a ton of clothes. A ton of clothes. We're going to donate some. Some stuff needed to be thrown away. We're going to sell some stuff. And their room has, has you know, they played. We were at home all day today. And, and they played in the room. And their room is significantly cleaner. Has stayed cleaner. Mm-hmm. Just purely that there's less clothes in there. So it's a win for us. Less stuff equals less mess. Isn't that funny how you clean and you just feel better about life? Mm-hmm. So. It's true. Yep. It's very, very true. So, yep, we're thankful today for time spent with family, for our house we're thankful for our friends and family we're thankful for the ability to educate our kids we're thankful for the city that we live in we're thankful for america it's been a good fourth happy fourth of july happy fourth of july we're not sponsored by estes rockets but we would love to be um this is the third or fourth rocket i bought from them and they sent me this really cool stainless steel would you call it a carafe I call it a thermos. You called it a thermos earlier. Thermos. It's like a thermos thing. Very, very cool. Stainless steel. Almost kind of shaped like a rocket. Super cool. We're not sponsored by Estes Rockets, Model Rockets, but we'd love to be. Estes Model Rockets, if you're listening, we'd love to sponsor. But we're not really a science podcast, although we can talk about science things. Just saying. Uh, We are, as of, I haven't actually checked in a couple days, but as as of a few days ago, we are right on the brink on the brink, on the precipice, perched at the precipice of being able to monetize this podcast based on the um, number of listeners, and uh, which is just absolutely incredible. It's been kind of a wild journey. Uh, we're always amazed that as many people listen to this as, as actually do. It's kind of incredible. Um, and so, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Um, and any passive income monetary donations or money that we would receive from future ads that we would do um would all be going to create future content for you guys or Mm -hmm. anyone listening or watching our youtube videos which you can find those on team carter family adventures on youtube um we're posting all of our videos of places we go and our trips and travels as a family and that would we continue to do that I'm really excited about all the videos and podcasts that are going to come out of this trip. Me too. That's going to be really, really cool. Me too. We'll do, uh, we'll do, we do some stuff on social media as well. She said, find us on there. Jennifer Carter, David Carter, Team Carter Family Adventures. We're all on Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. So you should find us on there. Instagram at Team Carter Family. Team Carter Family. Um, follow us there so you can kind of keep up to date. We're going to do some really, really cool stuff. We're going to do some interviews with some friends that we're staying with. <coughs> 
who knows who the Lord's going to put in our path. Maybe we'll do some interviews with some friends that we make along the way. You just never know. Yeah. Anything's possible. Um, Jen, what's the, what's the good word for the people to wrap us up here? Be blessed and encouraged that you can walk in freedom, knowing that freedom isn't really free. Be appreciative and grateful for all that you have. And that's all I got. That's all that came to mind. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think freedom is is a is a, is one hundred percent a blessing, but it's also a responsibility to do the right thing with it. You have freedom to make good decisions, freedom to make bad decisions too. So just being aware of what that looks like. I am very appreciative of our freedoms today. Mm-hmm. And every day, but not just today. All right, we love you all. Thanks for listening. If you made it to this point, to this point in the super secret post-credits section of the podcast, we sincerely appreciate you all listening. Please like, follow, subscribe, post, uh, poke, bumper sticker, send flare, Send stars. Send stars. High fives. Hearts. Comments. You know, all, all, all the things. All the things. Um, all the things that you can do. Um, do all those things. Everything helps. Peace. We love you guys. Good night.